Oh, all right. We, we're recording. Um, all right. Um, we're going to do a podcast. How does that sound? So that sounds pretty good. All right. Um, so this is this is Cal Fire Crackpots podcast about water politics and climate change. Um, we have slides too. Um, so it's not really a podcast. Um, yeah, just fucking around and see how it goes. So this is yeah, episode one. That. Ornamental lawns. You know, why, why does every boomer uh, have have a, have some green grass perfectly mowed in front of their house? And how that it's relates a capitalist to statement. <laughs> That's you wish. Um, okay, yeah. So this right here is Coachella Valley in California. Um, why is there a golf course here? Why is there a desert here? Why do all these houses look the same? Why is there a golf course here and a golf course here? These are things we'll get into, but we will not get into the stock photo watermark. So first off, <laughs> we gotta ask ourselves, what's what the is deal? the deal with what's water policy? The water policy? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> okay, um, it's too late for this. So water policy at its core is the legislation and how people, governments deal with fresh water, what they do with it, which boomers get to water their lawns and who gets to eat two things of equal value. So decide where the water will go. Where will the water go? It's usually the lowest point. Um, podcast over. So water policy why should you care um these are the things that water policy affects or at least partially does so this right here fallowed farmland who gets to eat when does when do people just say fuck it and not use farmland in the depths of the california drought um 2011 2017 about f by the end of it 40 percent of farmland in the central valley around that was completely there was no water they didn't have enough water to irrigate it so it was like this um what happens when your appalachian coal town floods uh, that's no good so dams stuff like that why do why do things flood um golf courses in the middle of the desert again testament to mankind's stupidity and disregard for the natural world it's bringing in water to the middle of the desert so people can golf i can hate golf what do you think about golf? Golf is, um, I think it's a statement about yourself more than it is a sport. <laughs> I think if you play golf, people don't say, wow, I wonder if they can drive well. They say, wow, I wonder if they have two or three houses. You know, the thing about golf is that, like, I've tried it a couple times. I just can't wait for it to be over. It's just, like, I think about... Oh, yeah, after, like, hole seven or eight, you're like, there's 18 of these? Just like, hole one. I'm just like, no, I'm done. And it's just, like, whenever I'm in, like, a golf course in a forested area or something, I'm like, this used to be trees. There used to be animals here. People that, get so angry playing golf, too. It's just a lawn. And then Donald Trump golfs, too. You know, they don't want to be associated in any way with that. I, I always thought golf was, like, a a way for sheltered rich kids to go out into the woods without getting bit by mosquitoes, but then they get, like, really, really mad while playing golf, and... Does Joe Biden play golf? I don't think so. Does he? That's a good question. Yeah, what is Joe Biden's, like, re weirdo, old, old white man sport that he does? Is it taking mm. the Amtrak to Delaware every weekend? Ooh. <laughs> Amtrak Joe. Least in San or citizen. So this is a, this is a moving on. This is a suburb. Um, icky, you know. April seventeenth, Biden plays golf for first time as president. April seventeenth. This year. Wow. Nice. Hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, suburban sprawl. We don't like it but water policy controls it. Can you get water to each person in here so they can game and eat and all the things that you do in your suburban house and, yeah, complain about people not having green lawns, which we will get into. Um, then this right here is Lake Oroville in California. Um, 
largest freshwater reservoir serving the Central Valley farmland. Um, it's not supposed to look like that. That's, mm. that's, it's not what it's supposed to look like. It, it's, it's normally full. So that's something we'll get into. Um, and then wildfires here. Again, not entirely water policy, but some aspects of it are, which we'll get into. And then drought here, again, not completely. So that's why you should care about water policy. It affects a lot of things. One thing that you should know going on is what fresh water is usually measured in. So acre foot, pretty simple, just an acre of water, an area, and then a foot, so volume about 326,000 gallons of water, and it is what two households use in about a year. Mm. Yeah. Wow, I did not that, know that. That's, that's uh, yeah, uh, yeah, people use a lot of water. I wonder what the metrics are that make all of that water use happen. I, I bet mean, it's mostly coming from washer and dry, well, washer units and dishwashers probably lawns i don't water my lawn i don't care if you don't water your lawn people water their lawns which is something we'll get into so we're gonna perfect segue we're talking about lawns today um so lawns are a good litmus test of how much fresh water there is to go around in a certain area um and of course you know how much people use to water it so the thing about lawns is that they need a lot of water, like a lot of water, um, something like this. Um, this is a little calculation I did. So most turfs, you know, carpet grass, Kentucky bluegrass, that stuff, need a shit ton of water, about an inch a week in growing season. And the average US lawn size, imagine this is a bit bigger than the average, but it's something that a lot of people could have. That lawn would require 6,800 gallons of water a week in growing season. So that's a lot of water, and they're the most common grasses, and they can survive at a lot of different temperatures. So as long as they get the water, you can generally use them. So if I wanted to be in Vegas and have a bright green lawn, if I had the sprinkler system, I could do it. But that's a lot of water in a place that doesn't really have a lot of water, which we'll get into. So here, this is Kentucky Bluegrass, abbreviated KBG. <laughs> wow. Yeah, or through a, the looking grass. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Through the looking grass, so, I suppose. So maybe we should tell all the boomers that their lawns are communist. Everything's communist. I wish. All right, moving on. So we're going to launch into this. So this is some like cryptid type images I took on Google Maps. I tried to take relatively same socioeconomic suburbs, at least for most of them. If you live in any of these houses, send a photo of us in front of your house and we'll send a t-shirt to you of both of us in front of your house. I don't want to go to Philadelphia. Neither do I. I retract that statement. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's the thing. Um, yeah, so this is just something here and i tried to take the pictures off google maps from as recent as possible and around the same time in summer um so just starting off this is philadelphia uh, pretty icky um so yeah we got nice green grass here but you know 41.5 inches a year that's for the most part that's happening on its own yeah so rainfall you can get pretty green grass just by rainfall itself. You really don't even need a sprinkler system. Sh Chirac. Um, we, we love it here, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, that's great. We are we are Sh Chirac veterans here. Um, this is not actually Chicago. This is Gary, Indiana, so like a few miles away. I just thought Chicago it, metro area. I just thought it would be really funny just to take like a really crusty like street in Chicago. Part of the Chirac conflict zone. <laughs> this is Gary, Indiana. It's the the Steel Town conflict zone. So even in this vacant lot right here, there's a lot of those in Gary, Indiana. Um, 
Don't go to Gary, Indiana. Oh yeah, don't go. If you're from, even passing through is sad. From Gary, Indiana, we'll send you another stimulus check. Oh, I love that fat stimmy from Daddy G. From Uncle Sam. Here's Daddy G. I wonder if uh, new Daddy Biden is gonna add a third stimulus, or I suppose fourth stimulus. Man's man's definitely will not. He'll buy you an Amtrak ticket. Hmm. Straight to Delaware. Right. Yeah. Only to Delaware. All all tra- all train tracks lead to Delaware. One way ticket to Delaware to increase tourism. What's in Delaware? Like farmland and like a few bad, really bad drivers. Like Rehobo Beach. Just like you can get such an OG license plate in <laughs> Delaware. They used to have black license plates. Good stuff. I thought that was a California thing. Mm. Texas, too. But their plates were, like, white on black. It was, like, all black. Oh. Alright, so we got we got green grass. Well, we got a lot of weeds here. So someone called a homeowners association. This will not fly. Um, Miami. It really speaks for itself. You have more than enough rain, even all year round, when stuff is pretty much growing all year round. You got plenty of grass. Really musty uh, roof here with its Taco Bell architecture. Ugh. Yeah, those are Taco Bell roofs. I'm not a fan. Have you seen those? Uh, not Taco Bell. It was like pictures of places that used to be a Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the church where someone has like a dental practice and <laughs> it's still got the Pizza Hut roof because they don't have like. The financial backing to replace their whole roof. Why would you even move into a place that's built like a fast food restaurant? You can even tell when, like, there was an auto zone that closed around here. And there was, for a small amount of time, a Chinese restaurant that was operating out of that plot of land. And they never really got rid of that huge garage door on the side. (laughs) Is it in the kitchen? Or, like, like, could you eat in there? I think it went into, like, the kitchen, because I never saw it open when I went to that area, but, um... That's really funny. I can't imagine deploying a delivery car like a fire truck. Mm. The point, the, that, 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 that's a good plan. Um, okay. So, so Portland. Um, Portland's a bit interesting, because it, it gets decent around amount of rain more than seattle and you know it's not really known for being wet like seattle is um but whatever and you know this person does not have a sprinkler system <laughs> but they do love their lawn and yeah pretty green you know you got enough rain throughout the year to support it but seattle so this is our first clue here um, we're getting a little yellow. Yes, call the home. Some spotty summer. rain in the summer. That's right, yeah. Most rain, in the western U.S., most of your rain is going to happen in the winter. Um, Seattle generally can happen all, most of the year. Um, but as you can see, this is the first city we start to see it, but so you're not really relying exclusively on grass to furnish your front lawn. You got shrubbery, some flowers, stuff that can survive on less water. Then you're also being creative with the water, you know? You see um, the mulch and the gravel. You don't want... How do I describe You don't have enough water to get to all of that if it were all soil. So you have to use mediums that are going to let water get further down. I just noticed this now. Why are there... This photo was taken in June. Why are there Christmas lights? (laughs) Some people never take them down. Like, it's- really old people that can't get on ladders. I mean, like, that's fair. Like, there was a church around here that just didn't take them down any part of the year. I know a lot of people, especially younger people, that will use um either the yellow or the white lights that are kind of ambiguous holiday lights as opposed to the rainbow ones. I don't know. And then you can keep those up all year and they still look passable 
this could very well be an old person house. I'm noticing the chairs out front. Kind of does look like an old person house, especially the one Japanese maple tree that every old person inexplicably has. The cultural unifier. Now, speaking of decorations left up all year round, there's like this actually haunted house uh, near me. So this is about two years ago, but like three people died in that house like at the same time. And the dogs died too. And no one knew about it for a while. But their Halloween decorations were up at the time. And then it was just kind of like something no one in the town ever talked about. And then the house is finally getting demolished and the Halloween decorations are still up two years later. And Carbon like, monoxide poisoning got me acting unwise. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm going with the fact that that house is haunted. We should tag it sometime. The fact that all of them went at once, and the dogs, it has to be something in the environment. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think carbon monoxide or radon or... You know what, viewers, input, how do those people die? Radon doesn't kill you instantly, though. I mean... Ra radon does the long con. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, radon just gives you cancer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they all got, like massive brain tumors at the same time <laughs> if you have uh, a basement get, get a radon detector oh yeah totally do that it's a good idea dallas hard-working citizen here mowing the lawn again more clues you know the grass isn't faring so well and you have you know a lot more reliance on native plants here you got trees, you got shrubbery, and you also have a tennis court, so, sorry, basketball court, so natural Dallas scenery in full effect. Hmm. Look at how high the socks are. That's normal. I don't know. That's like crew cut. You call socks crew cut? That's what you call it when it's halfway up your calf. No. <laughs> no one calls it that. was platinum white hair. I thought that was like a do rag or something. <laughs> you thought someone that was mowing their lawn. In... <laughs> Dallas. Let me put on my do rag. I'm gonna go mow my lawn. I'll be back in like a half hour. I love how he's mowing like he's like mowing this lawn that clearly shouldn't be mowed. <laughs> the Google Drive, the Google uh, what's it called? Google Maps camera did him dirty. They pictured him mowing his lawn on the one spot that has zero grass. <laughs> But, like, this lawn really shouldn't be mowed. It shouldn't, because that grass isn't going to be growing very tall anyways. Uh, grass in Chirac does not stop growing. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, truly. All right, San Francisco. This is the same house, but a few years different. So, you, this person clearly waters their lawn. You do not have, Absolutely. Do not have enough rain to, um, to get that green grass. But one thing that's interesting is this photo was taken in 2015. Um, this photo was taken um, this past summer. And one thing that's interesting is 2015, the depths of you know, one of the worst droughts in California history, um, you just couldn't water your lawn. Like there were, there were mandates against watering your lawn. And because of that, you know. You have I think I went... Um... I think I was in California around that time. I remember, um... It, it, like, it wouldn't... It, the only thing that really affects residents is being able to water your lawn. In terms of, like, when water is so tight that you just can't use it normally and there needs to be mandates on it, most of the burden falls on farmers and, like, industrial users. Um... Uh, you know, if, if you're a homeowner, your your cuts are going to be, like, considered last. Yeah. Because that's, you know, that that's when people get really mad and want to recall you. Yeah, vote in the recall election, please. Um, do that. It's a good idea. Don't, don't let some whack job be governor. Anyway. What's our next town? Oh yeah, this is this is no good. Um, we're going to Denver, base of the Rocky Mountains, home to suburbia hell and 
just a really like not not I don't like Denver. Don't like it. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, people from Denver. It's just not a don't don't like it. The Denver suburbs are getting so close to Utah. You might be able to see the Wendigo from your own backyard. <laughs> no, the, the Denver the Denver Indian food is pretty good. Uh, I'll give them that. But yeah, you know, I, I I just I don't I don't see the appeal. Why do you guys like Denver suburbs so much? You get there and you just you you can't breathe, so you gotta buy one of those like big oxygen canister thingies that make you feel like really useless. Boulder, Colorado is probably the better of the two major. Uh... It is though, like the thing that really like bothers me about Denver is that all of the bad drivers who are trying to drive out to the ski towns and are in SUVs for the first time trying to get all their ski gear there and they just drive terribly. Oh, yeah. Dude, if it, if there's even like a light snow um up in the mountains on the way to like Keystone and Vale and all that, there's like so many like jackknifed like it's like not jackknifed, like SUVs in a ditch. <laughs> it's great. Wow. My, Don't uh, forget if you're going to Colorado, make sure to open your chip bags first because if you have <laughs> If you have chip bags that are closed while you're going into Colorado, the elevation change creates a vacuum inside the. Um, <laughs> a vacuum inside a chip bag. Literally, it'll pop the chip bags. Yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah, like wouldn't it pop if you're going to a higher elevation? Yeah. Well, it depends on where they're packaged. The air inside is going to be lower pressure, but no, it's going to be higher pressure than the air outside. Yeah, but so it wants chips- to equalize. But where are the chips packaged, though? Anywhere, if it's anywhere that's low. Yeah, yeah. If so you get like, chips from Florida and bring them to like Colorado, I don't think you're going to get, get chips in Florida. Messy chips. I don't know where are chips manufactured. Where, where, where are the the Frito Lay? Don't buy Frito Lay. Um, Let's just look at like a map of the strikes, and that'll probably be where they're manufactured. Don't don't buy Frito Lay stuff. They're, 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 it's it's it, despite being like not like subpar chips in general. Frito Lay headquarters is in Plano, Texas. What's the elevation of Plano, Texas? Hmm. Six hundred sixty-six feet. God forsaken. <laughs> Plano, Texas. That's not real. I wonder if Hell, Michigan is at 666. That's that's definite. Great Lakes are like 700 something. All right. Ah, so... uh, 886. Damn. All right. Um, moving on. Denver. You know, it's not that much water. Um, you get a lot of runoff from the Rocky Mountains, but this suburb was, like, not quite at the base. Um, yeah. Yeah, the water is going through. It's not actually... Yeah, it's... it's You don't have enough rainfall to really support a lawn. Unless, you, of course, you're at the top of this hill right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's higher up, so you get some nice snowpack there in the winter. Oh, got a thanks. Thank you. I got a gift from Zoom. Um, I saw using, that as well. We're using Zoom to record. Um, I, I don't know how to use anything else. All right. Well, Honestly, neither do I. And going in person to share a mic is weird. Right, it's well, like um, it's like that scene in Ghost where she's at the pottery wheel and he's behind her, and it's just kind of like I don't know. What's the next town? Okay. Um, Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is a Prius right here, by the way. Just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, this, is, th- this isn't good. So, you, you have absolute bright green Midwest grass right here. Um, it's an immaculate lawn. Yeah, truly. It, it's not turf, though. It is not... Yeah, like the edge right there means the soil, so so it's not turf, but yeah, this is a very heavily irrigated lawn. This person 
It's a 2-4 house in LA. They must be rich. Yeah, they're, they're definitely good for that extra water, but that that's a lot of water. And then our final thing, I think. Yeah, Las Vegas. Ooh. <laughs> With uh, 4.2 inches of rain per year. Um, if you have any vegetation in Las Vegas that is not completely native to the area, you're 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 watering the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, this tree's dead. It is. Hmm. So, yeah, Las Vegas is not doing good on rain right now. Um. So. This isn't good for a lawn in this area. This is this lawn is using a lot of water. So just this is the last city. Um, I couldn't find, or I at least didn't look hard enough for a major city that had less rainfall than that. I'm sure they're out there. Um, major cities, probably Las Vegas is the last one on the list. Yeah, this isn't technically. If Las Phoenix Vegas, didn't mark lower than Las Vegas, does it? I, I didn't look. My guess is no. Tucson might. <laughs> Family Guy bit about Tucson. <laughs> Have you seen that? Tucson is 12.3. Wow. You've seen that bit, right? I have not. So, so Peter gets, like, really smart. And, like, they don't want him smart, so they send him to Tucson to make him dumb again. Oh, I've seen that. Um, yeah, I, I've never been to Tucson. <laughs> any anything that any major city in Arizona is inherently stupid, because why would you have a major city in Arizona? Peggy Hill has <laughs> described it best when she called Phoenix, Arizona, a monument to man's arrogance. This is true. Do you know how many golf courses there are? Um, in like Arizona. I bet a lot. A lot. You can buy 400 acres of land for nothing out there. Why would you want 400 acres of land in Arizona? So you can shoot stuff really far away. That's fair. So the point of this whole exercise is to kind of just see how freshwater varies in different cities, which is something we'll definitely get into um, in future episodes, and how it all relates to you because freshwater management is something that affects everyone and affects your immaculate green lawn. And that's just something we wanted to start off with because, again, it's a good litmus test to see how the freshwater sitch is in each city. Um, it goes from everything from Miami, where it like falls from the sky in like apocalyptic droves every day um, in hurricanes, to, to everything in Vegas where you're watering the hell out of your lawn. Um, and then... Sometimes the drop gets so bad that you can't even water your own lawn. There's restrictions on it and everything, which is something we'll get into. But last thing is this. So something that will be referenced a lot is the U.S. Drought Monitor Report. This is the most recent one um, as of two days ago. Hmm. This is this is a lot. Um, this is the intensity. It's just kind of a little map here. Um, so, you know, this one's abnormally dry. You, you wouldn't really notice it too much. You know, you might notice a bit of loss in farm productivity. Um, moderate drought, definitely noticeable. Things are pretty dry. Severe drought, um, definitely affecting farmland. Stuff may have to be fallow for that season. Uh, fire season is pretty costly at that. Extreme drought. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty bad. You're having a lot of restrictions on farmland and maybe even residential water usage. And then exceptional drought, it's basically just there's no rainfall. Exceptional drought is, like, crisis levels. That, yeah, that's not good. And then we take a look at the U.S. here. Granted, it is a, you know, August, late August. Um... But it just, just it's a good thing to see here. So southeast, much of Appalachia, it, it's not a concern. Um, one, you, at least in Appalachia, there's not a whole lot of farmland. Uh, the main thing, the 
main water usage, overwhelmingly, 70% of water usage, uh, at least in the US for freshwater, is farmland. So that's why farmland is the first thing to be affected when a drought happens. And that's why in places where even if there's a big drought and there's no farmland, it doesn't really matter. So like Vegas, Vegas is in extreme or exceptional, I can't quite tell, um, but still pretty dry. And it, it's not really that big of a deal. Like there might be some fuss about lawns every now and then, but there's no farmland there. <laughs> No one's trying to farm in um, Las Vegas. So it's not too much of a concern, but in lovely California here, 40% um, of the nation's fresh fruit and vegetables comes from the Central Valley, a place that is like almost exclusively an exceptional drought right now. Granted, all the water is coming from the, like, the Sierra Nevada mountains here and Mount Shasta here, which are both in either extreme or exceptional. So again, all stuff we'll get into, but it's so important. what do those S and L mean? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna pull that up. Yeah, I, I don't know what that what that part means. Let's see. S is short term, typically less than six months, and L is long term, typically greater than six months. I didn't know so, that. those SLs are probably treading around six months. The S are probably things that are, you know, just happening pretty recently. And then those Ls are most likely just climate based. Mm -hmm. And then. You might have heard on the news or whatever uh, that the Western U.S. is in a uh, mega drought, which is, you know, this is it. Pretty apparent, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you might have also heard driven by climate change. Very, very true. Something we'll also get into. But I just thought it'd be a fun first episode to kind of just take a look at what water politics are, some things we might be discussing, and just how it relates to you and your beloved green lawn, and then kind of just leaving you with that nap out there the yeah. next episode um okay next episode is on the why did i pull this up earlier i didn't know what are we even doing here it's gonna be on climate change and water so a lot more information about how that relates um Okay, you have anything else to say? Oh, uh, not right now. A any shout outs? Shout out to this very cold glass of water I've been sipping. Yeah, shout out to um, um, Noon Hydration Sport Plus Caffeine Wild Berry Flavor for keeping me awake right now. Ooh, Wild Berry Flavor. And shout out to all the people's houses we used in Google Maps. <laughs> All right, that's it. Bye, everyone.